Kruger Park is abuzz with tourists hoping to witness majestic lions, but one playful predator stills the show, striding towards the car and merrily crunching a side mirror. Oh, yeah. oh. Cameras flash as all ripples through the crowd. Such close encounters are rare treasures. The excitement peaks, however, when the lion, instead of sauntering off, sets its sights on the car's doorknob. A collective breath is held. Thankfully, the lock clicks, a barrier against what could have unfolded from this unexpected twist in the wildlife safari. Oh. Oh, my God. The rumble of an M60A3 tank shattered the Californian peace a metallic beast commandeered not by a trained soldier, but a soul in turmoil. Sean Nelson, a local veteran drowning in financial, professional, and personal storms, had hijacked a 57.3-ton titan of war from the National Guard. The tank chase, as it's been called, uh, that's probably one of the, if not the most dramatic events that have ever occurred uh, that involved the San Diego Police Department. For six miles, asphalt crumbled under his treads. Cars transformed into pancakes under his crushing maw. Utility lines snapped, spewing sparks into the terrified afternoon sky. Live TV camera broadcast the surreal spectacle. San Diego watched in horrified fascination as their streets became a war zone. The San Diego Police Department faced a nightmare in steel. Every clang of the cannon's barrel, every shudder of the engine, echoed the potential for utter devastation. Nelson, fueled by unknown demons, seemed to revel in the chaos. It was a scene ripped from a dystopian flick, the line between reality and rampage dangerously blurred. Finally, the juggernaut stumbled, felled by a collision or mechanical gremlin. With the adrenaline of pursuit surging, the SDPD made their move, forced entry a tense standoff, and then the finality of a bullet, silencing the metallic roar and ending the harrowing dance with disaster. Nelson's rampage cast a long shadow not just on San Diego's asphalt, but on the fragile psyche of a city witnessing its own streets turn into a battlefield. It was a brutal reminder that the scars of struggle, hidden or not, can sometimes manifest in ways none of us can predict. A 2021 Aussie YouTuber dare landed Matt Build in a desolate outback cave, armed only with baked beans and his friend's unsettling tell. Matt's channel thrives on leaving civilization in the dust, surviving on fish and hunting on animals. This time, water wasn't even on the menu. He hoped that the cave would quench his thirst. Four hours of trekking later, he found it. Descending a man-made ladder into the inky maw, venturing deep, Matt crawled through the claustrophobic holes, each a dead end. An unsettling symphony of falling rocks and unseen paws echoed near the entrance. He felt eyes on him, a primal unease crawling under his skin. By 11 p.m., nerves gnawed at him like the baked beans he choked down, the silence punctuated only by the drip drip of the unknown. Mm. That is beautiful. Baked beans in a haunted cave. Oh my god. That was the sound. That is the sound. Did you hear that? Look at my look at my arms. I got full goosebumps. It's the chains moving when I climb down the ladder. It's a big, heavy, thick chain. Wind can't move that. Holy. This outback cave was more than just a dark hole. It was a test of courage, an unsettling whisper of something lurking just beyond the light. The silence after the eerie chain's rattle was thicker than outback dust. Windless night? Absurd. Chain moved just then. It is 100% now. I heard it before. I'm 100% certain it's the chain that I walked in that you climbed down into this cave on. It's moving. Now, you can't move that chain with wind. It's way too heavy. There is no wind coming in here. There's no wind even fork up. Holy. Oh my god. I got 
You must have heard that just then. Look at my arms, dude. Oh, this fucked. Okay. Well, I've got my backpack back on and I'm booting on out of here. I just heard a sound. That's, it's not normal. It's definitely not a normal sound and I'm scared. I'm not gonna lie. I've been, it's probably about two hours, two and a half hours after I checked in with you guys. So it would be around two o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. And that sound was not normal. Um, I'm getting out of here. That rhythmic cling whispered of her presence below, unseen but chillingly real. The urge to flee gnawed at Matt, yet caution won. He barricaded himself near the entrance, the hiss of the cave as a lullaby. Later, whispers snaked around him, chillingly human-like. Armed with flashlight and fear, he scoured the darkness, finding only shadows and echoes. An unsettling truth sunk in. The greatest threat wasn't claw or fang, but the primal fear of another human, a hostile squatter clinging to this desolate refuge. Why would anyone choose this tomb-like life was a chilling riddle unanswered. As dawn cracked the horizon, Matt scrambled out, vowing to never return. The chain's rattle wasn't just a sound, it was a warning, a chilling reminder that darkness hides not just beasts, but humanity's darkest corners. This cave wasn't just a hole in the earth, it was a glimpse into the abyss, and Matt had stared back, shaken but unbroken. Phoenix, Arizona Cool TV Studios, May 28, 1983. The air crackled with the usual pre-broadcast buzz. Anchorman Bill clothes shuffled papers, cameraman adjusted lenses, and the production crew bustled about. But at 5 p.m., the hum of normalcy was shattered by the jarring intrusion of a shotgun blast. Enter Joe Gwynn, a cement finisher with a rambling manifesto and a gun pointed at the production assistant. Chaos erupted. Gwynn, fueled by a bizarre conviction of his own messiah mission, demanded air time to broadcast this message to save the world. For nearly five hours, the studio became a hostage scene. Gwen, his piece aimed at close the stomach, dictated his 12-page handwritten statement, a jumble of apocalyptic pronouncements and disjointed pronouncements. Close, trapped in his old room, read the chilling words for 20 agonizing minutes as cameras captured the surreal scene for a live audience. Finally, after intense negotiations, Gwen released Close and surrendered to the police. The city breathed a collective sigh of relief, the bizarre incident leaving a lasting mark on Phoenix and the world of live television. An Australian YouTuber by the name of Simon Lawrence is operating his drone at a considerable altitude over his vessel in Port Lincoln. Alongside his companions, they're on a mission to capture crabs, but their plans take an unexpected turn as they uncover a different presence lurking in the depths of the ocean. The great white shark appears to observe them silently for a moment before approaching for a closer inspection. Like a cane. When the shark displays interest in their crab trap, they wisely release it. Observing as the shark gracefully swims away, Simon and his friends count themselves fortunate, as great white sharks are known for attempting to capsize boats by colliding with them at full speed. A substantial fire was ablaze in Epping, New Hampshire, with multiple oil tanker trucks engulfed in flames. It remains uncertain whether the explosion occurred before the fire erupted. Fire authorities were present at the location, working to ascertain the root cause of the incident. Sheer panic ensued as a passenger decided to unlatch an airplane door while the aircraft was mid-flight, with 194 passengers on board. The incident occurred when the plane was just 600 feet above the ground, mere minutes away from its scheduled landing in South Korea. Witnesses say the passenger was sitting next to the emergency door. He apparently showed no signs that anything was wrong when he suddenly removed a plastic cover, pulled a lever, and the door slid open. Subsequently, nine individuals were taken to the hospital for medical attention due to difficulties breathing. Haste makes waste, and for one driver, it had made an enemy. Zipping out of the gas station, wallet and phone clinging precariously to the roof, he left a trail of lost items and misplaced gratitude. And to the biker, a good Samaritan on two wells who spotted the airborne belongings and gave chase.
He caught the driver, wallet in hand, phone dancing on the rooftop. It chanced to mend karma, to thank his rescuer. Instead, the driver's hand flew up, a rude gesture blooming like a toxic flower. The biker, calm but firm, tossed the wallet back, not directly to the driver, but into the open window. A message sent loud and clear. The piece de resistance, however, was the phone. With a flick of the wrist, it joined the wallet on the asphalt, the metallic punctuation mark to the driver's bad manners. Thank you so much, bro. The biker, less than delivered, pulled away, leaving the driver with his regret and a cracked screen to ponder. While interacting with wildlife can be an enriching experience, it's crucial to remember that wild animals remain unpredictable. A recent incident involving a group of tourists and a bison herd serves as a cautionary tale. Initially charmed by a friendly nuzzle, the tourists soon found themselves surrounded by demanding animals seeking handouts. This highlights the importance of responsible wildlife tours and practices and maintaining safe distances for both humans and animals. <laughs> Nestled on the shores of Manila Bay in the heat of Luzon, Manila, the Philippines' bustling capital pulses with 1.8 million vibrant souls. But on April 22, 2019, this rhythm was disrupted by a powerful tremor. Around 5 p.m., a 6.1 magnitude earthquake centered near the city struck. For many, it unfolded like a nightmare. Parents at a local pool, expecting a joyful afternoon, watched in horror as the water lurched and sloshed. Panic surged as they whisked their children away, but some, mesmerized by the unadulting waves, stood frozen. Our camerawoman's lens captured the chaos. Floodwaters sneaked through park pathways. People darting in all directions. Some take refuge under trees, while others instinctively ripe, stay clear of buildings and structures. The wisdom of seeking open spaces during an earthquake became tragically evident. Falling debris and collapsing structures were the main culprits behind the injuries, and in the absence of gaping fissures. A wide open area, far from swaying walls and precarious objects, offers the safest haven. This unsettling footage depicts the potential consequences when an ominous individual, disguised as a clown, unlawfully enters a residence. The young person capturing the video implores the clown not to inflict harm on him and his family. Unfortunately, the outcome remains unknown as the recording abruptly ceases. Throughout the video, the clown is observed brandishing a large knife and intentionally bursting balloons to instill fear in the alarmed family. How would you respond if faced with a similar situation? Imagine enjoying a burger and fries at McDonald's when suddenly, the ground starts trembling. That's exactly what happened to this YouTuber who captured the shocking moment of an earthquake shaking the restaurant on video. In the video, you can see the lights swaying, fixtures rattling, and even the iconic golden arches bouncing up and down. The YouTuber, thankfully, was underneath the table, protecting himself from falling objects. This is exactly what experts recommend doing in an earthquake if you're indoors. A routine traffic stop at a gas station escalates into a tense confrontation between police officers and a lone occupant in the car. The year is 2020, and the location is Windsor, and the driver is no ordinary civilian. Going back. Car now! 
What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! Sir, just get out of the car! Work with us and we'll talk to you! Get out of the car! You received an order! Obey it! He is a second lieutenant in the United States Army, fully in uniform. The footage paints a disturbing picture. The officers, voices raised, bark orders while the lieutenant calmly asks what's happening. He complies with their instructions, but one key order sets off alarms. He refuses to exit the car. Honestly, you're free. Get out. Get out. Yeah, you, you should be. Get out. What's Get out. Get out of the car. Get out now. I have not committed any crime. This sparks an unsettling chain of events. The officers grow agitated, even attempting to pull him out forcefully. You're being detained, okay? You're being detained for obstruction of justice? I do not have to get out of the community. You haven't even told really? me why I'm being stopped. Really? Get, your get, hands get out of the car now. Get out of the car. Get your hands off me. Get, out of the get your hands off me. You know what? Get your hands off me. The lieutenant, hoping for understanding, tries to play the same team card, emphasizing his active service in the military. But the tension escalates further. I'm trying to talk get out. To you. Okay. I'm trying to I'm talk. Gonna talk. Get out. Just get relax. out of my car. Can you please get out. relax? Can get out. Please relax. Get out of the car right I'm, now. Now. This is not how you treat a vet. Uh, I'm actively serving this country, and this is how you're going to treat me. Back up, Daniel. I didn't do anything. Back up. In a shocking move, one of the officers unleashes pepper spray. Not once, not twice, three times, directly into the lieutenant's face. Blind and disoriented, the soldier finally exits the vehicle. The ordeal doesn't end there. He's pushed to the ground as he continues to resist full compliance. Let's go! Available. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now! Get on the ground or you're getting sprayed again! Get on the ground! Can you please talk to me about what's going on? Get on the ground! Get on the ground now! This incident sparked outrage, with the lieutenant suing the involved officers for excessive use of force. The video evidence raises critical questions about police conduct, racial profiling, and the treatment of military personnel. It serves as a stark reminder that even routine situations can turn volatile, leaving us to ponder what exactly went wrong that day in Windsor. This malevolent entity holds a disdain for fortune tellers. The Haunted Side, a team on YouTube, confronts the demonic presence within the Sally House in Atchison, Kansas. While attempting to communicate with spirits inside a closet, an unusual event unfolds behind them. Call or touch the antenna right there. Let us know you're in here with me. Dude! What the f is that? I don't even understand how that happened. I don't even understand how that happened. <laughs> what on earth? Within the closet, one of their devices is activated repeatedly, and Jason perceives a shadow. Did you do it again? Yeah, it keeps going off. <gasps> Dude, I've never even seen it do We're that. not moving. No, I've never even seen it do, like, rapid fire like that. You know what I mean? Usually it's like a smooth fade in, fade out, and it's like... Tick, 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 tick. Did Some, you hear something? Yeah. I saw with my... I don't... The camera's facing right at you, but I wasn't looking. I saw with my own eyes something behind you on that wall move from right to left into that corner behind you upon discovering the displacement of a magic eight ball the team hears nearby movements well, how did it get over there is that you no something moved right you were standing me. still okay just so you guys see what the heck is that Sorry, I you. No, you're good. What was Later, as they descend the stairs, the eight ball is hurled in their direction. Red. What the? F Dude, it's a eight ball. Dude, this is going to red. It is evident that there is a distinctly demonic force within this dwelling, vehemently discouraging any further inquiries for these investigators. This footage was captured on a November evening at a Shell gas station in Kapu'ahu, Hawaii. In the week leading up to this incident, a series of crimes, including two armed robberies and carjackings, had occurred, all tied to individuals named Michael Kahalho and Melvin Spilner. Melvin Spilner, a shirtless man in white shorts, and his accomplice, Kahalho, in a sports jacket and black pants, were filling their vehicle's tank, likely at the same Shell gas station. Acting on a credible tip received that day, the police swiftly arrived at the scene in unmarked vehicles. Upon the police's arrival, 
Chaos ensues. Criminals typically flee to the side of the lawn when confronted by law enforcement. Spilner, upon spotting the police, attempted to escape, but a police officer executed a swift and decisive tackle, a move reminiscent of scenes from movies but unfolding in reality. Meanwhile, Michael, witnessing the commotion, accelerated away in an attempt to escape. As he forcefully collided with two police cars, officers opened fire on his vehicle in an effort to prevent his escape. They successfully halted him just as his vehicle disappeared from view. Spilner found himself pinned to the ground by some officers, while others dealt with Calhelho. The entire episode concluded as rapidly as it began, with the suspects apprehended. None of the officers faced charges for excessive use of force, as their actions were deemed justified, particularly in the context of firing on Michael's fleeing vehicle. Ahmad Saleh, notorious for his urban exploring, brings us face to face with a paranormal in his latest sponsored adventure. This abandoned, eerily anthropomorphic house is rumored to be gen haunted, and Saleh's footage proves it. Prepare to jump as the cameraman spots a shadowy figure around a doorway corner. Oh, But the chills intensify when, despite attempts to banish it, the gen seems to play a twisted game of peekaboo. Are you brave enough to watch? <laughs> The scene is serene, almost hauntingly still. Within the deserted corridors of a Mexican hospital, a lone worker, headphones nestled over their ears, occupies the frame, utterly engrossed in their solitude. His peaceful break is shattered, however, by the unexpected arrival from a departing patient. Confused by the visitor's presence, having meticulously cleared the area before his break, the worker greets them and offers directions to the nearest exit, but something doesn't add up. As the worker identifies the visitor on the hospital's computer, a cold dread washes over him. His gaze falls upon the security footage capturing that exact moment, and his blood runs cold. The chilling truth unfolds on the screen. There is no patient. The worker, it seems, has been engaged in a conversation with an unseen entity. Whispers ripple through the online community who have witnessed this recording. The answer remains shrouded in mystery, leaving the worker profoundly shaken by the inexplicable event. The Swedish Rhapsody number station, believed to have been operated by Polish intelligence, emitted cryptic numeric sequences coded for its agents operating deep within the western territories. Unlike the monotonous droning of other number stations, the Swedish Rhapsody was unique. Its chilling signature, a haunting snippet of the titular Swedish Rhapsody, adding an operatic layer to the already unnerving atmosphere. But it was the voice that truly sent shivers down the spines. A childlike, almost eerily innocent tone reciting the coded numbers, a stark contrast to the gravity of the situation and the clandestine world it represented. For the Polish spies scattered across enemy lines, however, these seemingly nonsensical numbers were a lifeline. Equipped with decoder keys and clandestine training, they could unravel the hidden messages within, receiving crucial instructions for the covert operations. Even with the Cold War's embers long extinguished, the Swedish Rhapsody's number station continues to captivate and horrify. Though its messages may forever remain locked away, the Swedish Rhapsody reminds us of the unseen currents that once ran beneath the surface of the Cold War, leaving behind a legacy of mystery that continues to echo through the ages. In the annals of American true crime, few cases echo with such chilling dissonance as the 2019 murders committed by Chris Watts. After brutally ending the lives of his wife, Shannon, and the two young daughters, Watts embarked on a desperate charade, playing the distraught husband as the police investigation into his family's disappearance unfolded. 
I, we had issues the other other week when people were kind of stealing stuff out of like garages and stuff like that. And I have parked my truck. I right have here. park right here. Yeah. The footage, captured by a watchful neighbor's security camera, offers a glimpse into the abyss of Watts' deceit as he stands alongside officers, feigning concern and suspicion of neighborhood prowlers. The shadows beneath his eyes betray a chilling truth. The bodies of his families lay hidden, victims of his own monstrous act. The footage itself is not graphic, yet it hangs heavy with haunting irony. Watts, his voice a practiced tremor of worry, spins a tale of possible abduction while the camera silently records his already condemned soul. Justice, though delayed, eventually prevailed. Watts, stripped bare of his charade, faces the consequences of his heinous actions. Lawrence Ray wasn't always a monster. This former Wall Street worker, once fighting corruption and injustice, took a horrifying turn, leaving a trail of shattered lives and broken wills in his wake. His story is a stark reminder of how darkness can twist even seemingly upstanding individuals. Ray's descent began subtly in 2010, moving into his daughter's dorm at Sarah Lawrence College. He befriended her classmates, charming them with his confident voice and disarming smile. But beneath the surface lurked a predator. You leave. I was so scared. He wouldn't let me sleep. He controlled what I was eating. He would yell at me. He would beat me. He took away everything that made me me. Over a decade, Ray slowly spun a web of control. He used threats, violence, and psychological manipulation to break down his victims, forcing them into a cult-like existence. Find themselves in abusive relationships and I was convinced that if I was uncomfortable, if something felt bad to me, that that was because of something that was wrong with me. Sleep deprivation, false confessions, and even prostitution became weapons in his twisted arsenal. Ray's psychological profile paints a chilling picture. Diagnosed with histrionic and narcissistic personality disorders, he possessed an uncanny ability to manipulate and control. He could disarm anyone with his charm. While behind the facade lurked a hunger for power and dominance. This disturbing footage presented in court stands as a grim testament to Ray's reign of terror. It depicts him inflicting physical and emotional abuse on his followers, forcing them into acts of submission and degradation. The consequences of Ray's actions are devastating. Young lives were irrevocably damaged, futures stolen, and trust shattered. The question remains, how could someone seemingly dedicated to justice commit such unthinkable acts? Lawrence Ray's story serves as a chilling cautionary tale. It reminds us that darkness can take root in unexpected places, and the allure of control can warp even the most seemingly decent individuals. At what point did you decide enough? Um, I didn't. The FBI came. <laughs> the FBI came and arrested him, thankfully. It took them coming to get him for me to be able to even consider having um, a life again. As we delve deeper into his motives and methods, we grapple with the chilling truth. Sometimes, the monsters we fear most were the masks of those we least suspect. The video starts with a serene scene. A hunter slowly ambles towards a young deer nestled peacefully in the forest clearing. The herbivore seems unfazed by the approaching human, even as the hunter gets closer, mistaking his calmness for tameness. The hunter ventures further, unaware of the danger lurking beneath the deer's gentle facade. Deer, though generally harmless, can be unpredictable, especially during mating season or when they feel threatened. And in this instance, the seemingly tranquil creature lunges, antlers raised, transforming the tranquil scene into a heart-stopping encounter. Caught off guard, the hunter has no choice but to drop the camera and retreat, narrowly escaping a potentially fatal confrontation. Tempers flare, but nothing could prepare the city for the fury of Sidney Meckham, a 42-year-old driver whose road rage took a terrifying turn during the annual Grand Floral Parade. Stuck in a parade-induced gridlock, Meckham's anger boils over. 
He's on his way to see his mother, but impatience overrules reason. Cameras capture his reckless journey, documenting every dangerous maneuver. Mechum doesn't let cones and caution signs deter him. He plows through a construction zone, narrowly missing workers and equipment. The tension mounts as he nears the vibrant parade route. In a moment of unimaginable recklessness, Mechum screeches right into the heart of the festivities. Screams erupt as parade goers scatter in terror. <laughs> thing we saw was um, just people yelling, trying to get the kids out of the road. We thought it was one of those kind of terrorist attack or something. Determined to stop him, a police officer on a motorcycle gives chase, sirens rolling, but Mechum shows no signs of surrender. He leaves through the crowd, weaving past stunned onlookers. Police cars, lights flashing, block his path. But Mechum, fueled by a twisted defiance, swerves and speeds away, leaving a trail of shocked faces and shattered peace. One problem with drivers on the road these days is attitude. They get behind the wheel, they're in a bad frame of mind, and that leads to bad things happening when they're out on the road. If you feel yourself agitated and excited, pull over to the side of the road, take a moment, do some deep breathing exercises, just relax, calm yourself. Mechum was finally apprehended and is facing charges. Sunlight fades as a lone spear fisherman plunges into the ocean depths. His mission? On fish, blending into the aquatic realm like a silent predator. But the hunter becomes the hunted when two sharks emerge from the gloom below. The sharks move with silent grace, their sleek forms camouflage against the coral reefs. The fisherman, attuned to the slightest shift in the water, senses the danger. His heart hammers as shark lunges, jaws agape, aiming for a deadly bite. But instincts take over. In a flash, he throws his spear, deflecting the attack. The spear snaps into the shark's jaws. The predator recoils, surprised and momentarily stunned by the unexpected resistance. This close call serves as a stark reminder of the power and unpredictability of nature. This video, captured by a concerned employee, reveals the unthinkable. The subway manager rummaging through a garbage bin and pulling out a loaf of bread. The manager's justification were short on bread, but instead of being tossed or composted, it's loaded onto a delivery cart, brought back into the restaurant, and prepped to be served to unsuspecting customers. The employee who filmed the incident alerted the local rugby council, who swiftly dispatched an environmental health officer to investigate. Needless to say, the manager was promptly interviewed, and the subsequent inspection revealed a multitude of food hygiene violations across the restaurant. Remember, trust in food safety is paramount. Be an informed customer, ask questions, and don't hesitate to report any suspicions of unsanitary practices. Horror unfolded on Interstate 30 as a car erupted in flames, trapping a man inside. But in the face of searing heat and thick smoke, two courageous police officers refused to stand by. Officers Mark Kling and his partner were the first to arrive, the crackling flames and desperate screams painting a grim picture. Despite lacking specialized equipment, they knew that they had to act fast. Bilal L. Arman, 31, sat disoriented in the driver's seat, likely under the influence of drugs. Thick smoke billowed from the wreckage, blurring vision and making every breath a struggle. With unwavering determination, Officer Kling used his baton to shatter the passenger window. Minutes stretched into an eternity as he and his partner fought to unbuckle the seatbelt and pull LM in to safety. Finally, they managed to drag LM in away from the inferno, collapsing onto the pavement, gasping for air. He was rushed to the hospital, his life saved by the officer's selfless act. A joyful sunset on a rooftop in Istanbul turned into an unimaginable heartbreak for a young TikToker and her family. Cobra Dogan, a model known as Cobra Dogan online, was visiting her cousin Helen in Turkey when the unthinkable happened. 
Everything seemed lighthearted, filled with laughter and the promise of a beautiful sunset. In a video Helen recorded, Cobra can be seen sitting on the edge of the roof, attempting to step onto another section, but in a split second, everything changed. A loud crack echoed through the air as Cobra stepped onto a fragile plastic covering. Helen, witnessing the horrifying scene, ran for help. By the time emergency services arrived, it was too late. Cobra, with her bright smile and vibrant online presence, was gone. Cobra's family, devastated and heartbroken, is now seeking answers. They believe the building's roof was not properly constructed, leading to the fatal collapse of the plastic covering. Her uncle, Nebby Dogan, spoke to the media stating, the contractor did a bad job. The panel broke the moment she stepped on it. As an investigation into the incident unfolds, Istanbul mourns the loss of a young life cut tragically short. Cobra's family prepares for her burial, grappling with the immense pain of their loss. YouTuber Brennan Frederick isn't your average adventurer. He is drawn to the forgotten corners of the world, places where time stands still and nature reclaims its own. In his latest video, he takes us on a journey to a treasure trove of memories, an abandoned gas station. Reaching this hidden gem isn't for the faint of heart. Thorns and brambles weave a protective barrier around the station. I told you we were gonna find a way in. Each item, from a discarded cigarette lighter to a tattered magazine, whispers a tale of everyday life. The only thing we got left some light bulbs, some tape, petroleum jelly, BC powders, and headache medicine. This wasn't just a gas station. It was a hub, a mini-mart, a social center for the surrounding community. As Brennan explores, the video becomes a poignant reminder of the passage of time. Buildings crumble, businesses close, and once bustling hubs become silent witnesses to change. But they also leave behind stories, whispers of lives lived and laughter shared. Passion in sports is amazing, but it's crucial to keep it respectful and positive. In this video, unfortunately, things take a negative turn. A scooter rider, caught up in the fervor of the moment, directs verbal threats at a bus full of opposing team supporters. While emotions run high during games, it's essential to remember sportsmanship and avoid personal attacks. Instead of the desired effect, the rider loses control and collides with the car behind them. Thankfully, nobody sustains any injuries. Eight agonizing hours, filled with desperate searches and silent prayers, culminated in a dramatic rescue when police found a young girl hidden in a kidnapper's hotel room. It started like any other sunny day in Fort Worth, Texas. Help me! Help me, please! A mother and her eight-year-old daughter, her identity protected for her safety, were enjoying a casual stroll when their lives turned upside down. My daughter just got kidnapped! A kidnapper snatched the girl, caught on a chilling doorbell camera, and vanished into thin air. Hours melted into eternity as police scoured every corner of the city. Finally, a glimmer of hope. The kidnapper's car, abandoned in a nearby hotel parking lot. But the girl was nowhere to be found. Fort Worth police, refusing to give up, doubled down on their efforts. They returned to the hotel, questioning the front desk clerk. It led them to room 333. Do you have the room information for room 333? I need like that person's name when they checked in, all that stuff. Where they confronted the suspect and placed him in handcuffs. We got her, we got her. Then, a tiny head emerged from a laundry basket, hidden beneath a pile of clothes. The girl, terrified by the kidnapper's threats, had remained silent throughout the ordeal. 51-year-old Michael Webb, the man responsible for the heroin kidnapping, now faces the consequences of his actions. He has been sentenced to life in prison, a small measure of justice for the trauma inflicted on the victim and her family. The Bakersfield Police Department released video footage Tuesday of a November 26, 2023 officer involved shooting on Manning Street. The incident, shrouded in tragedy and questions, unfolded following a call about a deceased elderly woman. Responding to the call, officers investigated the woman's death, finding no initial signs of foul play. However, during the investigation, they discovered the 53-year-old son, David O, had an outstanding arrest warrant for robbery. As officers attempted to apprehend O, the situation escalated. Hey, David, real quick. Put your hands behind your head. Hey, 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 he's reaching. Uh, uh, I don't know. 
grab it. According to police, O brandished a knife and refused to comply with orders to drop it. In response, Officer Dakota Leopardi Lacombe, a two-year veteran of the Bakersfield Police Department, discharged his firearm, fatally wounding O. Drop the knife! Drop, drop the knife! Drop, drop the knife! Following standard procedures, Officer Leopardi Lacombe was placed on paid administrative leave while the Kern County District Attorney's Office investigates the use of force. The released video footage aims to provide transparency and allow the public to form their own conclusions. A dramatic manhunt unfolded in Canton, Ohio on February 6, 2024, captured in a heart-pounding SWAT video released today. The chase for 22-year-old Jamari Harper, suspected in the fatal shooting of 52-year-old Gary Marks, culminated in a daring escape attempt and eventual capture. Just before 5.30 a.m., police responded to a call about a man with a gunshot wound. Tragically, Gary Marks didn't survive, and Harper became the prime suspect. SWAT teams descended upon the house where Harper was believed to be hiding. Video footage shows the armored vehicle rolling up and officers in full gear cautiously approaching. However, Harper made a surprising move. He jumped from a second-story window and circled around to the back of the house. This was his chance. He sprinted across the street, but adrenaline in haste proved treacherous. He tripped twice, then again, tumbling onto the sidewalk. Despite his falls and the hot pursuit by officers, including a K-9 unit, Harper couldn't outrun his fate. He was eventually apprehended and is now recovering in the hospital from the injury sustained during his escape attempt. Harper faces a slew of charges, including murder and aggravated robbery. A truly harrowing moment unfolds as a toddler is spotted ahead, meandering alone on a highway with a speeding tractor trailer passing by. The potential for tragedy looms large until the timely intervention of Naperville, Illinois Police Sergeant Anthony Menino. Out of the corner of my eye, I initially thought it was a dog at large about to run into the street. I'm trying to corral a one-year-old boy running across 59. Swiftly taking action, he exits his vehicle and halts all traffic behind him. Hey! 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 Come here. I was praying to God he wouldn't make a left turn and enter that lane of traffic. In a matter of seconds, the toddler is secure and unharmed. You're okay. You're okay. How you doing? What's your name? There was no crying. There was no sense of distress. Just looked like a curious kid running down the street. Subsequent investigations by the police revealed that the child had managed to slip away from his mother and wandered two blocks to the bustling highway. Routine refuel turned inferno, not by reckless pump play, but a hidden spark from within. A woman, filling her Jeep, fiddles with the nozzle, then slides back into her seat. What should have been ordinary chills into a nightmare as she bursts out moments later. A static whisper from her clothes, it seems, ignites the gas vapors, transforming the scene into a fiery spectacle, unlike careless clips. This wasn't her fault. There's almost no way she could have known. But instinct takes over. She rips out the hose, flees the flaming chariot, and that's where the scene fades. The Jeep, maybe a whimper and silence. Anticlimactic yet blessedly intact. It's a stark reminder. Danger can lurk in the mundane, but so can the courage to outrun it. An Alabama high school band director's post-game celebration took a shocking turn when he was tased by police. Johnny Sims, leading the Jackson Olin High School Band, had agreed to play an extra tune after the game. However, eager to clear the stadium, officers approached Sims, requesting he wrap it up. Body camera footage captures the tense exchange. Sims, determined to finish his final song, tells the officers to back off while continuing to conduct the band. Despite repeated warnings and even the field lights being switched off, Sims remains resolute. Despite The situation escalates, culminating in a physical struggle and Sims being tased in front of his stunned students. Charged with disorderly conduct, harassment, and resisting arrest, Sims insists the situation could have been handled differently. The incident has sparked a heated debate, raising questions about police protocol and artistic expression. 
In July, courageous individuals sprang into action to rescue a man who had recently plummeted from the Ambassador Bridge, linking Detroit, Michigan, to Canada. Spencer Baker fell a staggering 150 feet into the Detroit River, witnessed by a nearby family who promptly sought assistance. We heard really loud banging on our side door and people yelling that somebody had fallen from the bridge. They were pointing to help us. They're like, there he is, there he is. I see him! Get him, get him, get him! Right there! They got him, they got him. He really wasn't swimming, he was just bobbing in the river and he had no life jacket. And once we got him out, we put a blanket on him and just reassured him. He just kept asking why was he wet and and what happened to him over and over again. I said, you fell off a bridge. Yeah, he's breathing. I remember falling and I was just thinking that this is it, man, my life's over. I'm never gonna get to see my daughter again. The people that really deserve the credit were those folks in the park that saw him fall and, and did something. One punch, one life lost. In Elswick, Newcastle, Thomas Brand, 45, felled Anthony Richardson outside the Chesterfield pub after a day's binge. Minutes after, Brand's friend, Aldous, had already floored Richardson inside. CCTV captured the heated exchange, then the fatal blow. Richardson crashing onto the ground, head slamming, fatally injured. Brand, the killer, showed no remorse as he received a six-year manslaughter sentence. Richardson's family, heartbroken, shared the footage, a stark warning against the devastating power of a single punch. Aldous, 28, faced separate assault charges. This tragedy, etched in Elswick, leaves a chilling reminder, one swing can steal a life. Driving home, Noah's peaceful commute takes a chilling turn when a stranger relentlessly pursues him. Ignoring questions, Noah seeks refuge in a parking lot, phone poised as a shield against the unnerving encounter. It's about half an hour away. Yeah. What? Oh, uh, I'm eating dinner with my family. Eating dinner with a family? Mm-hmm. The stranger's questions grow more personal, the request for a meeting more insistent. I'm busy tonight. Yeah, you too. What? Oh no, sorry. I totally did not mean to do that, sorry. I'm, I just hold my phone. I'm kind of addicted. <laughs> Addicted to my phone. Finally, sensing the camera's gaze, the stranger disappears, leaving Noah shaken but wary, hoping it was just a one-time scare. You too. See ya. Holy crap, I'm terrified. Okay, so this is like 100% honest reactions. Like, my hands are shaking a little bit. So, you know, I'm driving along, and this guy kind of like waves at me, I think, and at first I thought he was just being weird. And I'm like, oh, he wants over. So he puts his turn signal on, he gets over. I'm like, okay. Let him over, wave at him. He waves at me. I thought that was it. Well, he turns, and I, we both turn the same direction. And uh, we're going down the road, and I want to speed up past him because I'm about to turn over here. So I want to speed up past him. And I, I go past him, and he, like, waves again. So I, I wave again to be friendly. He goes, woohoo! And, he, like, woos at me. I'm like, all right. So I just, like, give him a thumbs up. I keep driving along. And I'm... Um, uh, meeting someone at a truck rental place because uh, we're, we're moving recently. So I'm in the parking lot waiting for uh, my dad to pick me up soon. And uh, I pull in here, and I guess he thinks I want to pull over and talk to him. <laughs> so the guy pulls over in the next parking lot over and comes over, and it's this dude in this green, like, Tacoma truck, as you saw in the video probably. Pulls up, he's like, hey, how you doing? And... I thought, like, maybe he's some guy, like, that I've known in the past, like, he's some family and friend, but I don't recognize him at all. So he just keeps talking to me, he's like, oh, where you live? And I didn't want to tell him where I live, but basically, he's, he asked me, like, if I'm up to something later, and I'm like, oh my god, like, I don't want to tell him, like, uh, no, I don't want to hook up you, with you, I don't want to be, like, rude, but I'm like, no, I'm, I'm with my family. 
That was so awkward. I hope he didn't, like, get my plates or anything. This isn't even my car. It's another family member's car, so I guess that's good, because it's not my car. But, oh my gosh, I'm freaking terrified. <laughs> I'm not good with, like, confrontational stuff, usually. Like, I, I was able to keep myself together, <laughs> and you saw in the video, like, oh, are you videoing me? Like, I wanted to get that guy's face in case he tried to murder me or something. Like, I, I made sure to get that. In Texas, where the sun sets on convenience stores and bathes muggings in an unwelcome glow, this homeowner's routine drive home took a shotgun-fueled detour. Parking just as he pulled into his driveway, four figures materialized, barking demands and brandishing weapons like warped Christmas ornaments. One lunged, rifle butt aimed to shatter his sanctuary, but the homeowner's foot met the gas pedal first. Tires squilled, asphalt burned, his haven receding in the rear view mirror, leaving the men of the brazen daylight behind in a trail of dust and shattered expectations. Grammy-nominated rapper Takeoff, whose stage name embodied his boundless energy and explosive talent, knew how to embrace life. And as the final chapters of his story unfolded, it was with the comfort of good food, good company, and the familiar rhythm of his own success. Takeoff, along with Quavo and Offset, formed the rap trio Migos, whose infectious energy and lyrical dexterity took the world by storm. Their chart-topping hits like Bad and Bougie and Stir Fry became cultural touchstones. On November 1st, 2022, the final day of Takeoff's earthly journey began much like any other. He was spotted getting his jewelry cleaned at Johnny Ding and Company Custom Jewel, a familiar routine for a superstar preparing for a night out. Later that evening, he attended a private party at 810 Billards and Bowling in Houston. Surrounded by friends and the infectious beat of his own music, Takeoff's presence in the Johnny Ding & Co. video, captured just hours before the tragedy, offers a poignant glimpse into his final moments. He looks relaxed, his smile mirroring the camaraderie he shared with Uncle Cuevo and the owner's enthusiastic welcome. This seemingly ordinary interaction becomes a heartbreaking reminder of the brevity of life and the unexpected turns it can take. Enjoying a hammock can be a relaxing way to unwind on vacation, but prioritizing safety is crucial. In this video, a young man enjoying a hammock experiences a dangerous situation when his friend starts swinging it unexpectedly. Unfortunately, the strap breaks, causing him to fall from a ledge. Thankfully, he lands uninjured in the water. However, this incident highlights the importance of responsible behavior and awareness of potential risks, especially in remote locations far from emergency services. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Corey! This video, published by 601 Production LTD, compiles CCTV traffic camera footage captured along Route 45 in Japan on March 11, 2011. During the devastating Tohaku earthquake and tsunami, the footage starts with vehicles seemingly unaware of the impending disaster approaching off screen. As the water rushes inland, the danger becomes clear. Some cars are seen attempting to cross the floodwaters before returning back as debris, including uprooted houses and trees, surges towards them. The screen is eventually consumed by a torrent of debris and water showcasing the destructive power of the tsunami. While the video does not detail the fate of the drivers captured, it serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of heeding warnings and evacuating from dangerous areas during natural disasters. It's important to avoid making light of such tragedies or portraying individuals' actions for entertainment purposes. Instead, the focus should be on the sobering reality and potential dangers associated with natural disasters. A majestic line has scaled the roof of a parked pickup truck in a game reserve, its powerful paws gripping the metal. <laughs> Clearly intent on exploring the vehicle, it searches for a way inside, but the windows and doors remain stubbornly closed. Fortunately, the truck seems driveless, easing concerns about potential danger.
Undeterred, the lion leaps onto the truck bed, perhaps seeking a comfortable perch or a hidden snack. Will it succeed in its playful quest? Only time with all. While bison may appear calm and even majestic, it's crucial to remember that they are wild animals with powerful instincts. Never approach a bison, especially on foot. This applies even if the bison seems peaceful or curious. In this video, the individual gets dangerously close to a bison, potentially startling and stressing the animal. Remember, even seemingly gentle herbivores like bison can react unpredictably if they feel threatened. This video depicts a situation where a group of individuals encountered several costume individuals while driving. Initially, they believed there was only one person, but more individuals appeared, leading to a sense of uncertainty and potential fear. The group managed to maneuver their vehicle and leave the area unharmed. It's important to remember that not all encounters with individuals in unusual attire are inherently dangerous. If you find yourself in a similar situation, prioritize your safety and remain calm while seeking to understand the circumstances. The chilling whispers of the old stadium claim another victim. YouTuber Zhao Long, once again drawn to its shadowed embrace, finds himself stalked by an ever-present dread. The same fiery red ball mocks him, leading him on a frantic chase only to send him sprawling. It's clear, evil clings to this place like cobwebs, but the true terror lingers just beyond sight. Did you catch it? A fleeting form in the mirror, a silent silhouette behind him. Trick of the light? Maybe. But watch it vanish as he turns, a chilling confirmation of its presence. Yet, the shadows hold more than whispers. Look closely in the doorway's darkness. <laughs> A face emerges, pale and framed by cascading hair. Xiaolong's not just hunted by shadows, but haunted by them. This stadium, a playground for demons, has turned its sights on him and escape seems a terrifyingly distant dream. Forget the five second rule, friend. This news acre learned the hard way that floor food is never a good idea, especially when live on TV and surrounded by colleagues and millions of viewers. And you're going downhill fast, pal. Look at this. It's also... <laughs> Scott Haney, weatherman extraordinaire, mistook a mystery morsel on the studio floor for a snack, promptly popping it into his mouth. <laughs> Look, you live grape nuts all over here. What is happening? Come on. It's everywhere. Clean up. There. Oh. Oh. Cue the collective cringe from his co-anchors, who weren't exactly surprised by his floor food foray. Please. I can't believe you just ate that. Literally. You can't? I believe it. They're a little soggy. But even seasoned oddballs have limits. They taste like shoes. Oh! oh. <laughs> I smell feet. Like I smell feet. <laughs> <Smell feet. laughs> you are crazy. You just ate that right off the floor. Oh, I don't think that's oh, a great... Oh, boy. I don't think those I don't are think that's a great nuts. That is beyond the three-second rule. Way beyond. The initial grimace at the shoe-like taste was soon replaced by pure horror as the truth dawned. Those were not grape nuts that I ate. Ugh. I kept finding more and more of it on the floor, and I thought it was grape nuts because it looked just like it. My cat threw up, and Ugh. I must have stepped in it, and that's so what I disgusting. ate. Disgusting. I thought it was grape nuts. I ate cat vomit. 
you guessed it, cat vomit, courtesy of his own shoe. And to top it all off, he shared this delightful tidbit with the entire world. It's disgusting. It's on the bottom of my shoe, and I thought it was grape nuts, and it's cat vomit. Talk about memorable weather moments. One can imagine how slow the news must have been that day. Sparks flew, not just from the motorcycle. As a Massachusetts trooper pulled over a reckless driver, the scene quickly escalated from a routine stop to a tense standoff, with the motorcyclist arguing and even attempting to resist arrest. In a shocking twist, the biker didn't wait for justice. He gunned the engine and sped off mid-confrontation, leaving the trooper unharmed but shaken. Deep beneath the bustling streets of Minneapolis, a group of urban explorers from YouTube channel Free For All embark on a chilling journey through a network of forgotten tunnels. Their goal? The legendary Satan's Cave, a place shrouded in rumor and mystery, never before documented. As they delve deeper, the air grows thick with dust and the passage narrows, forcing them to contort and squeeze through the claustrophobic openings. Sunlight fades, replaced by the unnerving glow of their headlamps. The brick walls morph into smooth ancient stone, then abruptly yield to unsettling carvings etched directly onto the cavern walls, grotesque faces leering back at them. It's a creepy sign, but graffiti marring the stone reveals that they're not the first visitors. A million others had been here, leaving their mark but not venturing further. Then a hidden side passage beckons. Unmarked, untouched, and uncharted path towards the unknown. Hunched low, they crawl on hands and knees, the air thick with anticipation and unease. Finally, they reach a narrow opening, the supposed entrance to Satan's cave. Relief washes over them, quickly replaced by dread. The passage is too small, impassable, but to their left, a gaping mall of darkness, a vertical shaft leading to who knows where. The nickname Satan's Cave suddenly takes on a chilling new meaning. With a shared sense of unease, they turn back. The final ominous hole might hold secrets, but some are better left undisturbed. This urban exploration may not have reached its mythical destination, but the encounter with the unknown leaves a lasting mark, a reminder of the mysteries and dangers that lurk beneath our feet. Buckle up for a bizarre escapade straight from YouTube's cult revolutionaire Traveler. In Argentina, a man perched precariously atop a moving car, stick in hand, he strikes a pose as the vehicle screeches to a halt. The scene, initially tense, takes a comical turn as the man erupts into a twerkathon, taunting the approaching officers. The standoff becomes a minute-long spectacle, the man swinging his stick, spitting and twerking with reckless abandon. Finally, the officers overpower him, bringing his bizarre performance to an end. This incident serves as a reminder that reality can sometimes be stranger than fiction and even stranger when caught on camera. Chills guaranteed. The Mineral Springs Hotel, notorious for its paranormal activity, welcomes the brave souls of Paranormal Quest. Armed with a steady cam, K2 meter, and REM pod, they dive into a room buzzing with unexplained energy. The meter spikes, whispers rush past, and the rest in peace echoing from the spirit box sends shivers down their spine. Rest in peace. Huh. A plea or a threat? 
The music box's sudden chiming further fuels the unease. What? Well, where is it? Paranormal music box right back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right there, dude. Oh, shit. Who is that? Clarence? Is that you? Do you like the music box? Mentioning the basement sparks another chilling message, but it might be worth it. No, but it might be worth it. Let's go brave the bugs. <laughs> Are you trying to talk to us? Is this a spirit pleading for escape or luring them deeper into danger? As communication in the basement delivers the final warning, urging them to leave. Leave. I just need you to confirm if you want us to leave right now, and we will, but I need you catball it up. Absolutely. The message is clear. Something lurks below, and it doesn't appreciate visitors. Will they heed the warnings or push their luck, tempting an unknown fate? Stay tuned for a Paranormal Quest chilling encounter with the spirit of Mineral Springs Hotel, where the line between curiosity and consequence blurs in the darkness. The forest holds his breath as the hunter steadies his camera, capturing his companion aiming down the sights. Suddenly, the tension cracks as a hulking moose emerges from the shadows. The encounter is chilling, but the hunter, understanding the perilous dance of respect in the wild, knows a shot could mean disaster for both. In a moment of incredible discipline, he lowers his weapon, choosing survival over the thrill of the hunt. This encounter isn't about conquest. It's a stark reminder of the power and fragility of life in the untamed wilderness, where respect triumphs instinct, and sometimes... The greatest trophy is walking away unharmed. He's pretty cool. Dive into a heart-pounding encounter between two fishermen and a taxman of the seas. A hulking shark with an appetite for the catch. As soon as the recording starts, the tension mounts with the arrival of the apex predator. Known for stashing fish from lines, this particular tax man seems particularly interested in the men's haul, encircling closer and putting their lives on edge. Sharks are unpredictable and driven by instinct, making escape attempts futile and potentially deadly. <laughs> After a nail-biting dance, the shark eventually claims its tax and disappears, leaving the fisherman shaken but ultimately unharmed. A serene paragliding flight takes a terrifying turn in this video. Suddenly, a twisted cord sends the man plummeting towards the ground. Panic sets in as he desperately struggles to untangle the mess, but the descent remains relentless. With the earth rushing closer, he makes a split-second decision. He pulls the backup chute. A life-saving whoosh of fabric fills the air, blossoming just as the ground screams towards him. With a heart-stopping thump, he lands safely, narrowly escaping a potentially fatal crash. Buckle up for a lesson in instant karma. Two thrill seekers decide to turn the freeway into the personal drag strip, blocking traffic and endangering lives. Oblivious to the danger they're creating, they rev their engines, ready to unleash their reckless fury. But little do they know, Justice is riding shotgun in an undercover cop car, silently blending in with the flow of traffic. As the illegal race begins, the undercover car springs to life, sirens welling and lights flashing. Their joyride screeches to a halt, replaced by the cold reality of flashing red and blue. Even if they manage to outrun the cop this time, the incriminating evidence of their license plates captured on camera ensures their recklessness won't go unpunished. Terror unfolds in a seemingly mundane setting, an elevator. Two women enter, a routine interrupted as one leaves, but the remaining woman's attempt to retrieve a forgotten case turns into a nightmare. The door slams shut, trapping her inside, 
Panic sets in as she frantically fights the doors. The elevator safety system kicking in, leaving her suspended between floors. In a desperate gambit, she squeezes through a narrow opening, only to be met with the terrifying reality of the closing doors. Her screams echo through the shaft, reaching her son who alerts security. A heart-stopping 40 minutes tick by before her rescue. The chilling incident serves as a stark reminder of the hidden dangers lurking even in everyday moments, and the importance of a quick thinking and community support in the face of unexpected peril. The allure of internet fame can push people to extremes, but this woman stunned with a full-grown alligator is undeniably reckless. Plunging into murky waters to swim mere inches below the predator's powerful jaws is a gamble, no matter how rare alligator attacks may seem. While some might romanticize their unspoken bond, it's crucial to remember that wild animals, despite seeming calm, can react unpredictably. Her actions not only endanger herself, but also contribute to the dangerous narrative that these creatures are tame or friendly. The incident serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us that respect for wild animals trumps internet validation, and seeking thrills at the cost of safety is never worth the risk. The notoriously haunted Stroud House in Wake Forest throws open its spectral doors to the brave souls of just ghouly things. Their mission? Capture the elusive shadow figure rumored to stalk the premises. Join Becca as she ventures into the chilling kitchen. A second shadow emerges, towering, enigmatic. Is it merely Becca's form cast by shifting light or something far more unsettling? The figure's stature hints at something otherworldly, a resident ghoul lurking in the shadows. If this is indeed a paranormal presence, the ghouls of just ghouly things might be in for a night they won't forget. Tragedy unfolds in Louisville, Kentucky as a neighborhood dispute turns violent. On February 19, 2023, officers from Louisville Metro Police Department responded to reports of a woman identified as Kenny Marie Basil brandishing a firearm towards neighbors. Drop the gun! Ms. Basil, known to have a history of mental health issues, ignored repeated commands to drop the weapon as she approached the officers. In a critical decision, the officers were forced to use their firearm to subdue the threat. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Despite immediate medical attention, Miss Basil sustained injuries but survived the incident. Following the incident, Miss Basil faced charges stemming from her actions. This unfortunate event underscores the complex challenges officers face in de escalating tense situations. Jay's day took a terrifying turn when a strange sound from the roof shattered the evening's calm. A mix of cracking and a feline meow sparked worry for his pet, sending him outside to investigate. What he didn't know was that his furry friend would soon become his hero. Moments after Jay stepped out of the garage, the roof came crashing down, a chilling reminder of the storm's hidden dangers. Luckily, both Jay and the brave cat escaped unharmed, a testament to their quick reflexes and a bit of unexpected feline heroism. Looking back, Jay realized the recent solar panel installation weakened by the storm might have been the culprit. Gratitude washed over him, attributing his safety to a stroke of luck and perhaps a furry guardian angel looking out for him. Heart-stopping footage from inside the U.S. Embassy in Iraq captures an attack by indirect fire. Though the Embassy's C-RAM system, SC, violently intercepts some of the rounds, the video shows explosions as others hit their mark. Brace yourself for a harrowing glimpse of the dangers faced by diplomatic personnel.
This video captures an unexplained aerial phenomenon over Aguadillo, Puerto Rico. The footage, allegedly taken by U.S. Homeland Security, shows a fast-moving object maneuvering near the airport before seemingly splitting and disappearing into the ocean. While the object's origin and purpose remains unknown, its reported speed and agility have sparked intrigue and speculation. It's important to remember that unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAP, don't automatically equate to extraterrestrial activity. Investigations into similar phenomena often reveal mundane explanations, ranging from experimental aircraft to misidentified natural phenomena. While the allure of alien visitors remains captivating, it's crucial to approach such observations with critical thinking and an awareness of potential alternative explanations. Dashcam footage captures the dangers of running a red light, especially at a busy intersection. The video shows the driver attempting an illegal right turn on red, putting themselves and others at risk. Fortunately, a police officer witnessed the violation and promptly initiated a pursuit. While the consequences for the offending driver are unfortunate, they serve as a necessary reminder of road safety and the importance of obeying traffic signals. It's crucial to remember that running red lights is a serious traffic violation that can have devastating consequences. Not only does it endanger the driver and others on the road, but it also puts unnecessary strain on law enforcement resources. A video filmed near Sandy Hook, New Jersey in 2011 captures a concerning incident involving a small boat and a large oil tanker. The footage shows the small boat positioned dangerously close to the tanker, highlighting the potential for a collision. While fortunately the tanker passed without incident, the video serves as a stark reminder of the importance of maritime safety and responsible boating practices. The December 2023 tornado in Hendersonville, Texas caused widespread devastation, damaging homes, businesses, and infrastructure. The severity of the event is evident in the video including the shocking explosion at the TVA substation. While the video captures an individual exiting a store shortly before the explosion, it's crucial to avoid making light of such a serious situation. Oh, shit! Come here. The sleepy town of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, was jolted awake in the early hours of January 14th. An observant officer on patrol spotted smoke billowing from a house, a harbinger of the drama to unfold. With the occupants safely evacuated, the call went out to the fire department. Six brave volunteers, pillars of their community, rushed to the smoke-filled home to battle the blaze. Captured on body camera footage, the scene is chilling. One firefighter steps through the doorway just moments before the house explodes in a deafening roar, transforming into an inferno within seconds.
Headquarters, get us some more rigs here. Get medics here also.
go back over there. What are you finding? They're still looking, but it's not safe. Your your uh, your sister's gonna come down from down the road, okay? All right. All right. So just go back by that car, okay? The aftermath was a testament to the firefighters' grit and resilience. Two sustained severe burns and received treatment at Copperman Barnabas Medical Center, while four others emerged with minor injuries, refusing further medical attention. The cause of the explosion remains under investigation, but one thing is certain. These firefighters, who risked their lives to confront the inferno, deserve more than our thanks. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.